Well, hello. I'm going to wander into the past a little bit to review today's pen. It is the Parker Vector. Well, I'll give you a little bit of background here. I first became interested in fountain pens when I was in elementary school. Uh, my family, and this was in the 80s, so there was no internet. Uh, my family got a pen catalog in the mail as junk mail. And I looked through it and I was just fascinated. And I fantasized about, you know, I want this pen, I want this pen. And one of the looks that really struck me was this arrow clip. But back then in elementary school, we're talking probably fourth grade, I purchased one of these guys for, I believe it was $3.95, possibly $4.95, but it wasn't much. It was in Colonial Park Mall in Harrisburg, and there used to be a store there as News something other, News Center. It had a yellow floor in it, and it was all like stationery, a little bit of books and stuff. You know, a little bit of everything. And I bought my very first fountain pen there, which was a Parker Vector. And I took it home, and it was everything I could have hoped for. I liked writing with it, but uh, I was very sad. One of my adult moves, because I've moved several times in North Dakota, when it disappeared. That made me sad. Um, it's kind of like losing a friend. So I was very happy uh, just this fall when I found one for sale on Amazon. Uh, now, the price is up. Now it's $9.95. Still not a bad price. Now, uh, when you look at this pen, it's not an impressive pen. The inside, you know, the nib is small. It's, it's a narrow pen. When you see it next to the Conrad here, when I do the size, you'll see. Uh, the design is very plain. The arrow doesn't even have feathers on it. It just has, you know, hint of where the feathers should be. Uh, this came with a push converter, which uh, and it has a little ball in it. My original Parker did not come with a converter at all, so I guess that's a step up. Uh, now, memory may be messing with me, but I remember the plastic is feeling a little better than this. This feels like a cheaper plastic than I remember, but memory. Can't trust it. Uh, I do clearly remember that the, this piece on the end here was actually silver. This one is black, but it fell off the silver fell out of my old one anyway. I also remember that the cap had a little bit of foam at the end that you were supposed to moisten to keep the nib wet uh, so it wouldn't dry out through evaporation. This does not have that. Anyway, writing with this pen, yeah, it's, it's nostalgia. It's bringing back memories. Is this a great writer? No. I mean, it's reliable. It's smooth, but it does absolutely nothing for me to write with it. And uh, one thing I don't like is right here, between the grip and the barrel is sharp and it cuts it and I feel it on my fingers and I don't like that. Um, so would I buy it again? Probably. If I lose this one, yeah, just for nostalgia, I might get another one to replace it. But this is not a pen I'll be adding any more to my collection. It's not even a pen that really makes me that fond of Parker. It's just, meh. <laughs> but like I said, the nostalgia and the emotion is what wins with this pen. Uh, so that said, let's talk size. Next to the Noodler's Conrad, you see it's a small, slim pen. Uh, it's about a quarter inch shorter, capped, uncapped, by the way, snap cap. And by the way, the ink does kind of evaporate out of it when it sits. Uh, half inch shorter, and the nib is just minuscule compared to the Conrad. Uh, and then posted. It's about the same length as the Conrad. Uh, this one uh, was made in Mongolia, which was interesting. I was trying to think what else I have that's been made in Mongolia, and I'm really not coming up with anything. So, interesting. I, uh, they, Parker doesn't make pens in the United States anymore, so it is what it is. So, uh, if you're looking for a cheap, reliable pen, this is one to consider. It's not going to wow anybody just works. So that said, let me show you it just working. Hi, I'm going to do my writing sample with the Parker Vector. I filled it with a sample because I refused to buy a bottle of this ink, but a sample of the ink that came with it when I originally owned it back in fourth grade. This is Parker Quink Washable Blue, which by the way does have some shading properties if you're into that kind of thing, but it's definitely not one of my favorite inks. Um, so this is a pen. It gives a little bit of line variation, but not a lot. Uh, it's a very small nib, as I think you saw in some of the close-ups. You know, it's an okay pen. It's, it's a pretty reliable pen for when you're buying 
cost it is. It writes smoothly. It writes reliably. It never gives any questions. It's just not one of those pens that really does anything for me. Honestly, if it weren't for the emotional connection, I, I wouldn't even think about this pen ever again. So as I said, no real serious line variation. It's a little small in my hand. But I suppose fourth grade me had a little bit smaller hands than 40-year-old me. All right, so let's do our quote. This time I'm going to steal from Christopher Hitchens, who's a writer of some note and apparently died not too long ago. I don't recall exactly when. Alright, now, uh, unfortunately, the heater chose to kick in while I was writing that, but even if the heater wasn't running, you know, some of these pens, you hear scratchiness as I write, not this pen. This is a very, very smooth writing pen. Just very, very, very nice. Um, just like I said, it's not one I can get excited about. I can't give a rational explanation why. It's just kind of an emotional touchy-feely type of thing, which us science teachers and math teachers go into these fields because we don't like emotional and touchy-feely, but whatever. So uh, I hope that was useful, and uh, if you're looking for a good, solid, low-cost pen to recommend to somebody, uh, you can't go wrong with this one. Just, you know, keep in mind this is not an exciting pen. So with that said, we'll see you later.